welcome to uh, St. Louis is section 1.2. I Our apologize. section something. It sucks. <laughs> something like that. Hey, we're off to a great start. So functions. Um, I'm going to say the definition of a function is for every item in the domain, there's one and only one item in the range. And you have another. Yeah. One so for there? every x, there's one and only one y. For every x, there's one and only one y. You got and, two y's uh, in trouble. I, I think in in the past. We use the, the vertical line test. So if this is your, there's your, what we want to see if it's a function or not, we take a, a bunch of vertical lines and cut down through that. And if it hits the graph at only one spot, then it's a function. Yeah, it's a function. Yeah, and if it hits it at Let's say that's our graph. our graph. If the vertical line hits it in more than one spot, then it's not a function, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So domain domain is all, is all of the values that x can have. So you want to get in your brain that domain are the x values of the function. Right, and the range is just uh, just where all the y values that kind of make sense are all the um, input y values wherever. Why? Because we said so. That's, that's why. You're welcome. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, find the domain of each. So I'm going to look at this and I say, I want to figure out all the values of x. Now we're inside a square root. Remember, square root, you can't take the square root of a negative number without getting something imaginary. So this number inside here has to be bigger than or equal to 0. So x plus 3 has to be bigger than or equal to 0. Solve that, and x has to be bigger than or equal to negative 3. So that is the domain. x is bigger than or equal to negative 3. Sometimes we'll write that, uh, if we look at that graphically, here's negative 3, and x has to be everything bigger than, oh, that's closed hole, everything bigger than or equal to that. Or you'd say bracket negative 3 up to infinity. That's another way to say x is bigger than negative 3. It's from negative 3 up until you get to infinity. OK, in this one, I'm going to break it up into two, two parts. So the top I'm going to look at, and we've got a similar rule as we did up here. Oh, sorry about that. That's all right. Uh, that we had up here is that x has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? Because it can't be negative. If I look at the bottom, the only problem I've got with the bottom is that if the bottom is 0, I'm in trouble. So if x minus 5 equals 0, uh, then or x cannot equal, x minus 5 cannot equal 0, so x cannot equal positive 5. Okay, so if we think about the number line, um, first thing we've got anything greater than 0 is okay, and 0 is okay also, so we've got a closed rule. And that's what it looks like, except that we've got this problem at um, 5. So at 5, we've got an open hole. Is that, 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 that pretty much like it? Okay, let's write it a little bit more formally, though. Let's say from, um, from 0 to 5, not including 5, though. We're okay. And then from 5 to positive infinity. Yeah. So if we look at that on the graph, we said, hey, from 0 until we get really, really close to 5, that's all fine. That's in the domain. All those numbers uh, <coughs> spit back a value in the original fun function. <laughs> Keep going. I'm dying. <laughs> okay. So once we get to 5, we're in trouble right at 5. But just a little bit after 5, if we keep going, all those numbers are also going to spit back a value, anything greater than 5. The only problem is right at 5. A lot of times this will be written with a little union symbol in between the two. Looks like a U. Union means this and that all included together, a union of those two. Should have learned that in middle school somewhere. Okay, now we said range. Uh, Mr. Cresswell said those are Y values. So um, why don't we take a look at the, the graph of this one? Can you get us to the oh, We graphed Y equals 2 over X. It took two math teachers a good five minutes to do that, but uh, if if we're looking for the range, those are the y values. So here's my y-axis. Let's say every value here has a spot that corresponds to it on the graph. Even down here, all these spots are all 
also on the graph corresponding to the y-axis, except right along here, the graph never touches it. All right, that's, that's called a horizontal asymptote. It gets really close to it, but it doesn't touch it. So this is not in the range. But all these other numbers are in the range. So I would say, if we're looking at the number line here, all the numbers are in the range except zero. And that's an open hole. So how would you write that, Mr. Creswell? So I'd probably write, um, for the range, we're OK from negative infinity to zero, but not including zero. Or we can also be not including zero to positive infinity. So anywhere in there except zero is OK. Very cool. So that's range or y values. Range or y values. Continuity means, is the graph continuous? Can you, can you graph it without picking up your pencil? That's all that means. Is it continuous? Can you graph it? So there are kinds of there are spots where it's not continuous. We say that's discontinuous. And there are three different kinds. Removable discontinuities are going to end up with an itty bitty hole on the graph. All right. Okay, so removable discontinuities, our example here through Mr. Creswell and I for a loop. We've got y equals x over x squared plus x. Now let's factor the bottom and say that's x over Factor an x out of both of these terms, x plus 1. Now this thing's going to have two problems. It's going to have a, a discontinuity at two different places. And one of them is when this equals 0. So at x equals 0, we have a discontinuity. And another one is when x plus 1 equals 0. Well, what number do you have to put in for x to make this uh, set of parentheses 0? Well, if x was negative 1, we'd have a problem. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So x equals negative 1, we have an issue there too. I'm going to make the conjecture that um, this one is removable because you can cancel those two x's out. So you can remove it. So really, your graph at x equals 0 is going to have a little hole in it. Now, most graphing devices won't show you that. So let's take a look at the graph. And at x equals negative uh, 1, look, we do have a... Uh, a definitely a uh, spot of discontinuity. I'm, I'm drawing the graph and then, oh, got to pick my pen up and keep going. At x equals 0, it looks like the graph keeps going, but there should be a little hole right there. That's called a removable discontinuity. I think I kind of botched that one up, but oh my, what a, what a day, huh? And jump discontinuity. Jump discontinuity would be like, um, you're, you're working at uh, some fast food joint, and you get $7 an hour for the first 40 hours in a week. But if you work over 40, all of a sudden your pay goes to uh, $11 an hour. You're, that is called a jump discontinuity, or it comes from a piecewise function because the, the, the function is defined in different pieces. And we'll definitely delve into those this year. You want to talk about infinite yeah. discontinuity? You want me to bring this back? Yeah, so an infinite discontinuity. Um, we mentioned earlier that there's a discontinuity. I got the pen right. Uh, there's a discontinuity right here, and it's an infinite discontinuity because if I'm going along, I'm going along, I'm going to have to go to infinity before I can actually pick my pen up. And then um, the same thing up here, I can't ever touch, what is that, negative one? Um, negative one uh, at any point. Right? Right. So it goes on infinitely. I liked how you said, I have to go to infinity. <laughs> to infinity and beyond. <laughs> All right. So increasing and decreasing. Oh, you've got this first one, I think. Okay, so let's look at the graph of this thing. Let's try. Right there, right? Yeah, let's bring it over in case it doesn't. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. So increasing, decreasing. It's What we're going to look at, we're going to go from the left, and wherever as we're going to make x get big, 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 and see what happens to y. So if I follow the graph, along x, it looks like y is getting smaller, 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 smaller. So y smaller. is going down. Y huh? is going down, so it's decreasing from here. We'll write this nicer in a little bit. Uh, decreasing there, and so I think that happens the whole time, right? That's not gonna change. Just, no, 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 it keeps on going forever. Right. Exactly, yes. So then we look at the rest of the graph, and as x gets bigger, 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 we're still 
Y values are getting smaller, 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 smaller. So I think we're decreasing from here too, right? We are, because it keeps going down, down, down. Down, down, down. Okay. So how do we want to write so, that? So what number is way, way out here, Mr. Creswell? Uh, what's way, 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 way out here on the x-axis. Maybe one? Maybe negative infinity. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> you already went to infinity. And then what number does it get really close to on the x-axis before it jumps? Uh, one. One? It looks like, nope, two. Two. Thank you. And then where does it, it jumps over two, correct? Yep. And then starts again? Yep. And then it goes until? Positive infinity. Positive infinity. So, so that would be the, the domain on that thing. But oh, the, oh, that would be when it's decreasing. Right, correct? that's the intervals of so decreasing. When is it increasing? Whoops. Never. No, this one's increasing. Never. Okay. Or do you still use empty set? No. Okay. Never. <laughs> Never. All right. So let's take a look at uh, just y equals two x. We should all be able to graph y equals two x just off the top of our head. It goes like that. And which is my graph going uh, from left to right? Is it going up or down? Well, it's going up, 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 up. So it's increasing the whole time. And it increases it forever. So I'm going to say on the x-axis, what number is way out here, Mr. Criswell? Uh, negative infinity. Yeah, good for you. And then it, it never stops, so it increases from there to there. So that's increasing. And where does it decrease? Never. 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 Is this you? Ooh, I think we were going to win this one. Uh, no, no, no. We've got a graph. Right. We've got a graph. Oh, yep. okay, but we're going to talk about it? Yep. All right, so we're talking about extrema. Is that correct? Extrema. Extrema. So what does extrema mean? I think maximums. Maximums? Minimums. Minimums. Extreme cases. Extreme cases. Extreme cases. And I'm going to make the conjecture that this is going to be a relative maximum on this graph, this point, because it's it's... The points right next to it are lower than it. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And this one is going to be a relative minimum because the points below it are bigger than it. Bigger than it. So I why did I say correct. relative max and relative min? Well, because I can find a point that's greater um, than this point right here. So for instance, this point, um, the y value is greater than that point. So it's not an absolute max. Absolute would imply that um, there's no more x values that are I would say this one doesn't have an absolute max, right. would you? Because it just keeps going up, 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 up forever. Yeah. All right, and, and same thing. I don't think it has an absolute min right. because it keeps going down, 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 down. So I would say this probably has an absolute max. You suppose that's 0.5 or yeah. a, a relative max. Relative. relative max at x equals 0.5 and a relative min at x equals 1.5. We're, we're kind of taking a guess there. We got our graph and calculator situation figured out will be better. Um, okay, symmetry even and odd. So even symmetry is usually called y, y axis symmetry as well. And my, my example is going to be uh, if our function is x squared. Okay, If the function of x values means you take x and you square it. If f of x is the same as f of negative x, it's, got, it's an even function or it's y-axis symmetry. So let's check. Here's f of x. f of negative x, that means you replace x with a negative x. So negative x squared. So instead of this x, I put a negative in its place. What's negative x squared? It's uh, just x squared. Yeah, so f of negative x is also x squared. If these are the same, it's even symmetry. Can you do odd? What if we took a function like maybe f of x equals x cubed? So uh, my rule here is that if I take the function, then f of negative x has to be negative f of x. So let's, let's do the same thing that we did uh, when we were trying an even function. f of negative x equals, let's see, negative x cubed. OK. So that means, since I've got a cubic, I'm going to go negative x times negative x times negative x. I think I'm going to end up with a negative Correct. out in front. All right, so this is going to be negative. Oops, sorry, thank you. It's all right. Negative x cubed. And I think all that's right. the negative so it, of the function. It's, it's not even, right? Right. Because these two aren't the same. Right. So then you check to see if it's odd, and then 
If you took negative one times this one, hold on, let's use some color here. Okay. If you took negative one times that one, mm -hmm. do you get this one? Yeah, you do. Yeah. That gives you the negative out in front here, right? Yeah, right. yeah. Th yep. This negative one would give you the negative right there. So yeah. yes. Yeah, so now, some smarty pants student of mine every year, or smart mouth, whichever way you want to look at it, says, hey, if this is an odd number, it's an odd function. And uh-uh, be careful. Math teachers will like to get you on that one. Um, let's say we have f of x equals x cubed plus 1. And a lot of my students say, well, that must be odd because it's got an odd power there. Well, let's check. What's f of negative x? Well, if you put a negative x in for this, you get negative x times negative x times negative x. Negative x cubed plus 1. Well, are these two exactly the same? No. They're not exactly the same, so it's not even. If I took this one and I multiplied it by negative 1, that's a cube, are these two the same? I'm going to say no. No. So this one would have neither. It's not even or odd. It's neither. There's nothing cool about it's it. It's neither. There's nothing cool about it. We can also look at that graphically, too, I think. Right. We can, and I, I think you can. We can do that in class if, if a student needs that. Yeah. And, but then they're not always going to have. Well, they're probably always going to have graphing. They're not smartphones. Yeah. Asymptotes. We already talked about horizontal asymptotes. If your graph goes, you know, like this, right, a horizontal line. If it doesn't hit that and it gets real close, that's cool. Um, and this one also has a vertical asymptote. So if, if it doesn't touch a line that's going vertical, then it's also got. We'll talk later on about how to find those, and we'll really go in depth. Just got to be careful. Don't abbreviate asymptote, okay? Be real careful with that.